It's academic and it's theater and the place where they both meet. We have the audience and participants for each other. Examples of women sharing what it is they do, sharing how we do that. There's no way you can ignore that feelings anymore. Work from all around the world. You can come and see and talk about. Yes, everybody. That's just what should be done. And indeed, my understanding of life, relationships, death, has already changed. 
survival of theater as an art form depends on that. But there's room for it all. There's room for it all. So thank you, um, everybody, for uh, coming here to the Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY. My name is Frank Henschker, and I'm the director of the Theater Center. Many of the, you might have heard already my, uh, uh, my speech. I'm going to try to do it a little bit faster, but still is important for everybody who is here the first time. It's part of the great Penn World Voices Festival. Penn is a great organization, a writer's organization. It not only gives out one of the most significant awards for writing, but also is fighting for the freedom to write and uh, has a fantastic writers in prison program for working on writing on it, but also get uh, writers who are persecuted out of prison. And uh, it's a good, it's a great privilege for us uh, to be uh, associated with Penn now for over 10 years. At the moment, over 80 artists, writers, are in town in New York City as part of the most significant uh, uh, festival, perhaps, in the Americas when it comes to literature. And it was created by Salman Rushdie and Paul Auster uh, during the first uh, Bush um, uh, administration, where they felt there was a tunnel vision. Not enough uh, 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 books from around the world were uh, being published or read in the US. 95% of all books come from the American market or the British one, and the rest of the 5%, half of it is French or German. So we have like two books, two and a half or three out of 100. And uh, it would be unthinkable in music or in world music to not know uh, what is going on in the performing arts or in the visual arts, not to be in contact, in global context. And I think Penn is making a fantastic contribution. And our uh, 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 little contribution is also this festival. And I contacted them and said, we also need writers uh, for the theater in this festival. And of course they said, of course. And we had, as you all maybe he saw, fantastic uh, contributions from Romania, from. Uh, uh, Burkina Faso, which we had, and um, France, and uh, many others. And tonight we have a Nobel Prize winning writer, Ilfride Jelinek, a ferocious writer, a brilliant writer, who uh, not only is known for her novels, but also uh, for her theatrical texts. They are condensed, uh, dark matters uh, of, of writing. They are relentless, 40, 50 pages full, no characters uh, uh, given, and every director you can choose where, who, says what, and can collage it and put it together. So she uh, presents a fantastic challenge um, to uh, uh, directors and to the audiences. She's very well known, very famous uh, in European stages. She uh, had here, uh, Jackie was a production, a good one at the Women's Theater. We have done three or four readings, and uh, she really wanted to have this play as the American premiere before it went to the Schauspielhaus Hamburg. So we had a reading already of this play. It's the first engagement of a major writer uh, in the world with Trump, who is our president. And, um, and uh, she uh, cannot travel anymore. She is in her apartment and she says she sometimes feels, in a way, uh, closer perhaps to him. She is in her apartment, she watches the news, she is so upset. She is uh, uh, you know, with her history of fascism in Europe, but also in Austria and in Germany and the early signs she detects and always has written against in a place like Ragnitz and others. And there's someone like Trump in the White House in his bathrobe. She also watches TV all the time. But they are you know, two heavyweights, but in very opposed uh, uh, corners in the boxing ring. And of course, we are with her. She is a brilliant writer, and I wish she could be here. She does not travel. Famously, she didn't go to accept the Nobel Prize. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, we are here. The translator, Gita Honecker, a fantastic work translator, couldn't uh, make it because she's uh, teaching um, at her university. And uh, it's not here, Stefan, the director, says hello from Canada. So, But we are happy to have a, a rework of, of uh, the great, great work, The Burger King. And it's uh, an idea of Miss Piggy, who is a blind seer and uh, who uh, reimagines uh, a king and a dictator of others. So thank you.
whom do I actually want to talk about? I'll have to confer with myself about that. First off, silence would suggest itself. I would prefer that. It's no work. Blindness, also quite practical. <laughs> Let me be. I see. That's what you're doing already. Let me be, for I am ill, and I understand nothing. I don't understand what I ordered here. <clears throat> Is it a birdhouse or a new garage? At least a carport I want to let grow over with ivy. If this is what I ordered, if it is what I've got, if it is the house for the birds, it will be no work for me either. <sighs> I don't know what's coming. I don't want to talk about my mother. Not ever. I couldn't care less if everything's in order with me. And I won't elaborate on it either. What debts have I inadvertently run into? Well, in that regard, the king scores much higher than I. At this time, he is busy. He has to carve millions of scores into his pistol. That is, into the barrel. And did he have some barrel out of this world? No, I don't mention my mother the father's murderess, but I helped her a little. Maybe it was even more than a little. Attention, here comes the new king. Quick, turn on the device. Make sure, you stupid cow, that you don't bring shame upon him. Watch out that he won't drive you out of this country. The king doesn't look to me as if he wanted to do anything at all. He borrowed money knowing that he can pay. No, play his debts to a T. He got far with debts, yes, even with the planes that were old which he flew. Of course, he was quite the son of a gun. He made a kill. Come on, kids. I'm no Medea. No, I'm not Electra either. I would not kill children. <laughs> From the man's mouth, you will hear that he does not want to kill, but to build many buildings, still more buildings. Now he's calling Scotland because he wants to buy another site there. What does this God talk about? What does he tell you? Now that you can finally see him, he foretells you a brilliant future, which you already knew. You don't need a God for that a future which no longer is one. That is the present. These coins are being issued now. Look here. The self-assured folks get the same thing on both sides. This coin is valid only for the bringer, but he can't buy anything with it. He's been bought himself and even paid for it himself. A rare feat. <laughs> Now the king will said what has often been said. Old age is massacre. Can't even look at you. Awful. Well, then I'll just hide behind my world views, which I often showed off with. A world for show, as it turns out now, is becoming the definite of sole worldview we've got. After all, we don't have another world to view. And now will you finally show yourself? You're quite a looker. Why are you hiding? Oh, Lord. Now we finally get it, why you've been hiding from us for so long. It is because of the hairdo. <laughs> you need a different coffer. <sighs> You're a nightmare. And better to your mouth would stay shut. The view is looking for someone who needs one. Most folks already have one. They paid plenty for it. Now he's finally worth something. What kind of forces are there is beginning to be effective? You don't say. Someone's hanging from a tree? That can be collective violence. No. No, and their entire packs are crossing the borders. Masses of people. Weapons to the masses! But quite a few people are still needed to balance this out. 
There are more weapons than people. Or maybe not, I don't know. When collective forces prevail, then they're already consolidated and get cracking. Let's roll! Violent anonymity, is that what affects this? Sure looks like it, but such anonymity vanishes completely behind the myths and the lies that bubble out of the TV. The man speaks. He's his own religion. Now you can throw away the one you've got. God is here. The king takes shape who is prepared any time for the violence of his neighbors and will therefore return the neighbors to the neighbors. Thank you. Anything the neighbor does just proves to us that the neighbor has aggressive tendencies. We deport him! <laughs> goes on. Folks go away. Life is inexplicable. It is inexplicable to me how life keeps moving. Why I won't keep still and must rather constantly catch a view of something. Even from a bus. Deny people force and they'll turn against you to get it back. Force is their favorite hobby and it is also a nice profession. They cast their vote but don't know who they voted for vote even though they did it themselves. Life's inexplicability explains why we can't view things without getting them explained to us. Life's inexplicability explains why we can't view things without getting them explained to us. How come? Earlier, on the net, things looked quite good. Even the preview of a view. It's even the one we had hoped for. The king has exactly the same. And from that view, from its high horse, we wouldn't gain something nobody wants. The king is in charge of it, and he's not for sharing it. He just decides this once and for all, and once he validated to the end, all other regulations expire, have expired. For violence is something external, in case you have observed it with children, um, the way they share shovel and sand bucket voluntarily, and yet already the next moment the bucket including its content fly in the playmate's face. Violence is not superficial, even though we would like to think it is, it fuses. It fuses. It is long fused. It goes in very deeply and then down. We're from very dark forces emerge and fuse your cancer with your losses of people and stocks and earthquake in Italy or whatever. It meets your own violence, which also is ready to break out and mow down everything anytime. Even though the grass you don't want to have, you don't want your neighbor to have either. This innocent, immaculate grass, which does nothing but grow, yes, the dandelion in it unfortunately does too, has nothing done to you, except being there and having also brought you the dandelion and you didn't like that. In case you're looking for your worldview, we have it. If you can get it or a similar one, whatever we have right now, anytime. But it is painful to look at the world, horrible. Take our glasses from our brand of Titian, not from the other one who also carries brands. But they have expired, they have lost their appeal, but that's all there is for poorer folks if they also want to see something they don't understand. The pathbreaker shows himself, but he doesn't know what he broke, why and how it came to pass that he brokered this path. He doesn't get it. He was no front runner. He just likes breaking things. But now he's got them and doesn't know what to do with them. The people, that's us. Pardon me. <clears throat> we are, of course, a different people. We are the folk, the Reich, and the new Fuhrer, that he's new already shows that he's not dangerous. The dangerous ones had their turn already. He's the vice regent. He's got the ball for that. As for us, we are a small folk, but we are also somebody. And we were even more. So many had to take their clue from us in order to take us to court. But that's over. Nothing to be done about that. Wind and fog are his allies. Wind and fog are his allies. One can't see anything. We're blown away by the new wind, like his speech. Well, maybe everything gets blown off before he can blow it all up, and he won't be seen anymore.
But there are other possible reasons for not seeing him. Because folks were looking for him in the wrong place. The breaker is he. He can break. He can break in everybody. Even the country's top intelligence. He's personal tie-breaking service. No more contests there. He contests everything. And now is the right time to contest everything. Yes, even the university for the sale of buildings, which, however, always only cheated and sold people, that'll be sell now. But you better believe him. He will pay you back for this, too. Did you vote already? Did you vote already? What for do you need a pathbreaker when all you are is broke and dying to get back? Where the wooden fence with the lopsided for sale sign blocks your view, you wouldn't really want to buy back your own house. No more house. No more shelter, no truth, no property. Tell me, are you testing me now? I can explain why we all belong to the banks, which had to be saved before, because if they had not been saved, we would have been safe. Now we exercise power. It's the essence of power that it demands surrender, utter surrender, yes, and even exercise, or we could not exercise it. We still look at power as something external, while it is inside us. It is already inside us. We surrender to it, and, and then it wasn't even our lover. We'd have never wanted a horrible type like that. Did you see his face, his hair? <sighs> That's not what we wanted. We never wanted that. But we got him, and now he's inside us. We sacrifice for him. We sacrifice ourselves to him. But this sacrifice does not appease him. He wants to continue to live in his sky fucking scraper where there is so much gold. I don't think it's real because there is so much of it. And from there, he will, he will call us to order. The king is already sharp enough. And the unconsciousness of his supporters' calculations, those who elected him, comes clearly to light on this um, freshly printed receipt streaming out of the cash register. And it is wrong, this receipt. Too little has been noted and netted because one fan in tow is not enough. Towing a trailer can be done by any car that's strong enough to carry a tennis ball on the tow bar. I can see the purpose of it. I still can see it. <coughs> but its function is to protect the part that's sticking out under the bumper to protect the other cars from itself. We often think we protect ourselves while we actually protect others. <laughs> Embarrassing. Often can't do. Carry the tennis ball, towing the trailer. I already said it. When the driver is too weak for it, then the trailer towers the towing vehicle. Doesn't it? And not the other way around. One can lose one fan and tow. One just has to give a voice to the fan base. This has been done here with. I don't have more to say about that. And this um, impotence. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that was a good thought, albeit not mine. How come the costume, um, sorry, the custom has not been delivered by now? Again, we paid for it three weeks ago by credit card though our credit has long been exhausted and we could not buy anything for it and had to give ourselves deliver, drone by drone to drone, victory of convenience, woohoo! The past can no longer be delivered. This is it. It didn't run out, it's here already, though different than it's ever been. And no sacrifice will reconcile us again. And the proposition, no, the um, presentation that everyone can be man and woman at once 
If he just wants it just as he wants it, nothing is fixed, only eternity threatens us all the same. This presentation will be given at the lecture hall today. Um, unfortunately, we don't hear it, even though all the um, visuals are in place. The lecture will be canceled and other than that, no one is saying anything. The thinker wanted to lead the leader, but lost him halfway. Because he overlooked a signal all other people had heard except him, lost him in a place in which he had no place. Poor thinker. I can see it already. This man, this man possesses the truth, which is a mystery, which is no mystery. We have been told long ago and unfortunately passed it on wrong. In any case, not as we've heard and not understood it either. Chinese whispers are even less understandable than Greek. Every child knows that. Not mine. <laughs> I don't have any. So I can't use force against them like Medea. But here I proceed myself once again. I shouldn't do that. And children were not delivered to me. Amazon claims they got lost in transit. Fine with me. <laughs> well, one thing I do know, this man has not killed any relatives. We know this for sure. All of them are still around. <laughs> and standing in front of the cameras, lined up like dogs in dog training would never do. They first have to be yelled at. He gets the best service anywhere. Only the younger and more beautiful are getting married. They're instantly recognizable anywhere. We don't need an internist or a seer for that. And we don't pay him either for telling us what he found out, what all of us have known all along and can watch any time on Face the Nation. Now, oh, Facebook. The king bought up all the blindness because he saw its advantages. One can believe a blind man anything he says. He isn't incapable of lying because he never gets to know the truth. Does all this come from his brain? Or is it someone else's invention? He can't remember his birth, which was followed by terrible events. Our life is based on this, not remembering. The protection of the environment will also disappear. The unborn's protection will come. The wall along the gigantic border. No, both are gigantic. Wall and the border made of Heidelberg cement, the world's best, much better than gas, which is good for heating at best. This wall will rise, water and gravel added, yes, lime too, how else could we cover so many corpses? And there we have it, the wall, bigger than we could ever imagine. It will be born so that the others can no longer be born, at least here with us. They won't get across the board in time to give birth to their children in the hospital's elevator. They don't have enough cash for a hotel. Well, at least they will have made it to the clinic. There they'll burst open like melons which get thrown on the floor. We are an American. We are one American. <laughs> but no more. Okay. Okay, move it to the positive. The children. The children, however, might be included in the insurance. The king assures you on a whim and his mighty wham and why. Because I say so. Because I am not I. I don't have a son. No son will die at the hand of the king. The king will not be the son who dies himself. I don't know. You have the choice of three paths, so pick one. Then give birth in peace and quiet, no in this quiet. Give birth to the savior, then tie his legs together and throw him. Watch. That's how he's done. You take the legs, like a purse at a handle, right? Then take him up a nearly impassable mountain. 
Oh my God. What? <sighs> there is none. Then go look for one. What's so difficult about that? The father's child, in this case a daughter, you reach into her and right away she barks at you. She yells at you. She doesn't put up with anything. So let her be. I finally stop this nonsense with words. That gal would never kill the father. Doesn't have what it takes. Fathers have every reason to suspect the worst of their sons. But none of those, not from the daughter either. The worst is not expected from them. Others will have to do that. The king is naked, not blind. What does he do to not having opponents? A king needs opponents. He grows on them. At first, everybody seemed to be his opponent. That was our fault, our delusion to think we were all of us. Wherever they all are, there always are still more of them all. And we are not all of us. And it is not all over with us. <sighs> Every one of us rejects him. Everyone around us, that is those I know, thinks he's able to overpower the power that's coming now and won't be coming or is coming straight away from him. Well, where else? That's good. Finally, a revolution is in the making. We've needed one for a long time. Otherwise, as of this moment, you would have slept another 50 years or however many they were. Revolution, too soon to tell. Hmm. We're still hearing the king's promises and won't let him keep them. He grabs for what he just heard, woman. We'll get that woman into jail, our opponent. And if it's the last thing we're going to do, well, maybe not the last thing for her, but it will the last she will see of us. A closed door with guards in front of it so she won't get out. But then again, no one asks for her either. The king cannot become good without losing his malicious sides. Which one of them will he turn to us now? To, to the Syrians? Who's that now? I said Syria, not Syriza. That man simply can't keep them apart. We then all turn to the troublemakers whom we first don't let in and then not out again, like the Russian. We don't want him and still he's here. Where? Well, that one we do want. Other Russians, maybe not. So then, do we really want him? Do we want all of them? No idea. The blind is talking to the blind. The net has been set up for orientation so that no one falls over the cliff. If one turns off half of it, a catastrophe can be the result should people have still been in it. For example, a few hundred Polish construction workers without helmets. With helmets, it would have been too expensive. They already had sledgehammers, so they could not reject the suggest to do without helmets. It would be cheaper that way. Nonsense, the other way around. Well, but everything has been turned upside down already. Nothing came out. So, a hole has been created. Something is missing. But it certainly will be filled soon. He eliminated it immediately, so he wouldn't be eliminated. But beyond that, it's spreading. The disorder is spreading. Since much slips through a net, there must be swept under it. Should I build yet another house and then no more? Cemetery is less work. It only needs work when someone needs to get in, says the king. But for now, let's get the building done first. The basement levels will be cooked in the books. Oh my god, now a landslide moved half my golf course into the Pacific? Hold it. No, 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 no. It was only the 18th hole. That's supposed to be half a billion? Okay, fine with me. That's what we'll tell the amazed public. We won't tell the IRS. They'd have to add on the half to say to make this course as expensive as I say. I must have my ID ready and show it even though everyone knows me. So that I won't get expelled from this country. Which I have in mind, but not for me. Because this is... What's coming next? People with their 
poor religious thinking and even poor knowledge will simply be thrown out. I try to hold on to the truth if nothing else works, but now can you hold on to something that keeps swaying? Am I supposed to look for it? I certainly have better things to do. First the king was mean to us, and then he was nice again. He doesn't write, he twitters. The thinker imputes that he has been the creator of violence in his first life, which he still spent among the people. Now he has been elevated. No, he levitated himself in his gilded elevator all the way into the sky. He's still here. That was my delusion. But as soon as he will be removed, also by force, we have not yet reached that point to explore his conduct of life. We only see what he's showing us. Maybe we'll never get rid of him. Think that's not what he has in mind and whatever is on his mind will happen. A king. Yeah. Um, what did I want to say? Will he first appear to us as a sort of um, savior? But then we will let him free again so he can proceed and how he proceeds better than right now. Oh, yes. Our king. Well, I'll be curious how the net and all that Twitter and the Book of Faces will, among them suddenly, sadly, none of me, will take to it. Very well. Because the book takes everything and everyone, and each one in turn takes pictures of others. Click, click, click. Thus this book grew and still keeps growing. No one has to look at the king anymore. The pictures are enough for where we are. He prefers living elsewhere. And his tweeting is enough, his cock gets through someplace else. He certainly has enough houses. Oh well. I have no monopoly on the truth. I just game it. Can't pay for the real since he only produce losses, he thinks. It's better then being king than beggar. I owe the bank so much these days. No repo man could dig up that much gold in my towers. No German repo trooper. It's the Deutsche Bank, after all, where we cook them up. Halt! German alt-right! The Deutsche! Where I have these gigantic debts. But once I'm liquid again, I'll buy up the truth or lease it depending what's a better deal. I'll buy it on credit like everything else. And I'll also make promises, because credit is for the pros and cons. Well, in any event, a promise of more. Why should I not take on more debts? And you bet I'll be able to take care of them. And high expenses are also necessary until one earns zero. That's hard work, expenses. They have to be worked up. It takes quite an appetite. Expenses are getting bigger and bigger. Sorry, evasions. The king has the money. That's good. It makes him independent, a big advantage. Well, this is why we elected him. And God as well has chosen him for it. He is choice. He gets people to take their life, if they still have it and haven't yet had it, into their own hands. But it is an alien life. It is a monstrous man-child they brought along. And now you are fucked! <laughs> <laughs> the tax return has our signature, but it isn't us. It wasn't us. The man child you're now holding in your hands wasn't it either. God, it is ugly. It can't possibly be ours. He owes the Deutsche Bank Zig Heil. One has to be big and be able to think big. Debtors can even be locked up. But first, we help the people. That's most important. We help them incur debts to begin with. Their wallets are teeming with plastic, and the king didn't come away empty-handed either. He got away with becoming king. What no one expected he would. Does it really matter what for he uses the money he borrowed? It sure does, but nothing can be done about it. The key goes to the bank, often even by mail. The interests are higher than the worth of the whole house. Not mine. It has its own garden, and its own paddling pool, and its own independent heating system. I 
our life is worth something, sure thing, but only to us because we constantly feel the heat. There are more and more of us. The poor are the more, and others are to follow. Actually, there really should be less people. Yet there are more and more, while they have less and less. I also request tax relief. Why does no one grant it to me? The king also has nothing. And look what he made of it. A palace. Countless palaces. Well, now, they certainly can be counted. Kindly permit me to make money from nothing. Then I'll personally dissolve what is still bonded and bind what is still separate. The desert, precisely. There you can't even separate one grain of sand from the other. And you can make losses in unlimited amounts. Nobody will notice. It will cost you anything either. Now the usurper shows his face. Really? That's him? True it is not. I mean, it is not his true face. Nothing is true what he shows. It has only been borrowed, but it will be never returned. You see it already. I don't yet. It is the same as an usurper's license, which gets him anywhere. Yes, gladly also into women into every house by way of monitor or display. He simply gets in everywhere. And then he tells whom he wants to hurt today and whom tomorrow and day after tomorrow. He says, at this time, that can change quickly, there's something else. I want to hurt neither you or you. He points into the air, but nobody's there. What? Becoming my father's murderer? <laughs> Never. He's been dead for me for a long time. And if I wanted to kill someone else, it's nobody's business. The king won't give a damn. Killing the father? Killing him? I'd never do that. Besides, he's already dead, anyway. How often do I have to repeat that? I never do anything that hasn't been done already by many and tried out by real estate professionals. If anything, I'd do it better. Oh, God. The sacrifice is crisis. The cult isn't what it used to be either. Each seer sees something else. That's something to think about. But nobody's got to think just because he cannot see. He has other organs he can contemplate elsewhere. But these here are his buildings. Of course, the king's got enough of them. That is plenty of buildings. He just bought another one. Buildings are his life, his sustainment, his entertainment, if there are casinos inside. When the payment is past due, it doesn't mean it won't arrive or stay away. It'll just come late. A deed will be recorded when he pays our Mr. King. Nothing gets recorded. Okay, King, you're 10 million. That's 2 million more than the purchase price. I call that more than generous. It's God's work. The devil's contribution are 2,800 in cash. With all that windfall the king has gotten from the bank, he keeps winding up the upkeep, which adds up to more than the value of all that junk. So what? Did you humans have no shame? He will give up everything and only want to be king. He won't give up anything and still become king. He's just saying it. And whatever he says is a lie. He even lies about his own name. So when he lies under a false name, which is only possible or advisable on phone or vis-a-vis -vis blind seers, he'll still rule without eyes, only with his voice, and get many, many more votes to boot. He sees everything through his <laughs> eyes, though he's eyeless. Yes. He's also talking. He competes for our votes. He needs our voices because his is not his own. He must be elected, otherwise he sees no future. Otherwise he does not see the future. Humankind, what nothing it is, your life. The nothing always for me. It is always the same, one and the same. No future whatsoever will take the place, I think. Yeah, that's what I think. The nothing constitutes his lifetime achievement award. He can frame that or stick it to others. The king. Now the country finally awakens. It is no longer the land of the whites. It is split as never before. Where is this?
crack, pray tell. We don't want to fall into it. We want to be either here or there to the left or the right of the chasm and look into it and be terrified. There it is, black. It's getting blacker and blacker. This land is our land. No more. It no longer belongs to the whites. Horrible! Whose is it then? I don't know. There's so many. I can't oversee it. Let's hope enough concrete gets delivered before we are broke, says the king, so that the house is finished before we are insolvent. Insolvent. Now, storming at him in packs, like herds of cattle, are the men who want to finally get to be something too. After their acts of violence, they vanished unnoticed. Now they're back again. They're coming from places, many places, whose cities should, whenever possible, not be recognizable at all. Do we send them off or do we leave them here? So those men were in foreign countries like us. Not like me. <laughs> the military are always in foreign countries. There isn't much to do there. Here, the men learn to go to foreign countries and to behave. Foreign countries, where I haven't been very often. Those men know them. It was their mission to commit dark things, dreadful stuff, and afterwards communicate them. The men hit hard, are holding back for now. We measure the stars on all shoulders, General Sir. By your stars, we shall know you. We won't need any generals. They're all here now. Nothing to be done about that. But I wouldn't let them into my home. Citizens will no longer build houses. They now have generals to build them up. Men who do not want to be addressed, in any event, not by some citizens whom they don't know. Generals are important. They kill but they do not defile the best of the dead. A gang of young white men say they're just talking about, um, what about? I don't understand. Whatever. Now, they're the first ones talking anyway. They always are the first one to take the floor. Listen, say those who never listen. Today, they're not talking about what everybody else is talking about on purpose, because they think this is the value of self-will that cuts itself off from reason, and once self-will is talking, then only about its ownness. Don't you find this strange? Heidegger doesn't. The white man answers, he does not want any more regulation of speech. He makes the rules now, which are, as stated, not regulations, but maybe even law. He's the forgotten working class. He can see that the elites are at a loss too, this is his hour. Now he will control the land and sell the voiceless a voice lesson, the ticket to a lottery vote, to each his own lot. No, he will find the ditched ones and hitch them to the masses again, and he will give a voice to the masses, unfortunately only one. One voice, one vote for the ditched masses. If the ditched get unhitched, they must be given a voice. Okay, here you have your voice, half a kilo vote. Will this be all? It'll be all. They speak with one vote. Should we count this one vote one more time? No, I'll count it for you. It makes no difference to me. It is one piece of vote, that's it. And it won't get more either. Everyone got only one. They speak with one voice. <sighs> Take the power and shove it up your ass. You say this funnier, but I can't do it now. The only one who can do it is is the one enforcing his power. He's above it. What should we do with power? We are pushing those who are foreigners, for us now, but haven't always been, at least that's what they thought, back into foreign lands where they belong now and forever. Is this supposed to be an action? No, it can be. But something should be happening, no matter what and no matter how. And so with me, as usual, it's always talk. Mm -hmm. A children choir enters. Lots of shuffling and whispering. Sing. Oh, you little snacks for God. Millions of people voted who weren't supposed to. 
an important but difficult task. No idea which one. Let's sing. Oh, horror of the darkness that enfolds me now. We better go inside, lest we get stung by the fingers of the bees and the wasps. Lest we have to remember and the misery when we grow up. Mm. The king must bring all the voters together again. Big task. Big task. An important message, that one, too. He can be this unifying power we strongly believe in. Sure, there were protests, but we, the kids, we jubilate. yippee doo riots! ba dum ba -dum. Yeah, those two. From the other side, protests and riots. But the king will unify the country. Well, this is why I voted for our king. I hate correctness. Correctness is what I hate most. And we are the most. <laughs> We've never thought he's the savior of the world. So when he makes mistakes, we'll criticize him. yippee do, Twitter, Twitter, we'll do all the time. Everyone says what he says. Everyone assaults the one he's always assaulted. Everyone assaults everyone except if he knows him. And even then. But we trust him. And his daughter is also a strong advocate for him. It's her vocation. She vowed to it and keeps wowing us with her vow. I'm for it. Yeah, she defended the king. Therefore, it cannot be true. The daughter defended him, and this is why I believe her. If he did that, he were doing something he did not promise us, we will protest. That's the beauty of democracy. We must have it somewhere. Twitter the tweet, Twitter the tweet, and another tweet, and yet another tweet, and another, and one more image to go with it, and there, the other image. I could go on with this for a lot longer. I'm totally thrilled, totally thrilled that he's our king now. It's a blast. <laughs> the opportunity is what is so fantastic about our system. The other one we don't like. We don't like her. Three missed calls and 15 texts on the smartphone, and all of them say the same thing, that they're all so thrilled and happy. La, 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 la. They say that now our country will get better. We'll get better. We'll get better. Hopefully, we can all work together and make the country again into what it was when he didn't even know it. Hearing this, Gave me even more hope. Cheerio! Woo -hoo -hoo! He takes away the sins of the world. He expiates us. In one flow, the downpour darkly bleeds away. It comes out of his bleeding eyes, which at least could see us once. Then they gave up. They did not want us to see anymore. We all exit singing now. And if with new courage, our hearts are filled, we can enter again. <sighs> One moment. Are you expecting me to flee from this country? Since so many must flee, this path was not meant for me. I thought I would be walking all by myself. Why then are so many people right here, of all places where I am, right here? What are they telling me? How I should fit, how I should fit in with them? Okay. What misery is out there still for me to appropriate illegally? Those folks who elected the king will soon find out about the sacrificial rate. I'll bite not from me, just as Abraham. He had to learn the lesson about his son. What did God tell him? What did God tell him? So then God would have never requested from Abraham that he should sacrifice his dear son. And this is exactly, I think I got this now. 
This is exactly how these factories, these smelting furnaces, or however steel is produced nowadays, and most of all where. So these factories have all been moved before they had to be slaughtered and gutted. Well, you won't find any more here. Look for them elsewhere. Best on another continent. The sun should have never been sacrificed. God knows it. But do you know it? So Abraham takes the wood and he puts it on his son Isaac. The wood and the sun so he would burn better. Sure, some fire under his ass. <laughs> no, under the smelting furnace which no longer exist. And if it does, then in India or China, that's too far away. He, however, Abraham, took the fire to the knife in his hand, and both of them went together through this rotted city, which has to become new again, freed from rust. One sacrifice probably won't be enough to accomplish this, but it's better than nothing. Thus Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. My father, Abraham replied, here I am, my son. But it is not enough. It's not enough for the son to be there, a competent worker who did not count, whoever counted anyway. Not he. OK, he didn't either. Only the father, who, like any father, had learned to slaughter, it could be very useful to him. There always will be wars. Here I am. My pleasure. And the son who can't see a steel mill anywhere, nor steel for that matter, he spoke, I see. Here is fire and wood. But where is the iron to boil down? Where is the product we are to produce? Am I to be the product? I've already been produced. After all, I've been brought here, but and we agreed on that. I was not to be destroyed. On the contrary, I'm here to work. I finally received my draft call to work. I had to wait an eternity for it. Abraham replied, what's there for him to say? My son, God, God will now get himself some sleep, a sheep, a sheep for the sacrifice. And here it is already. How pleasant. It has already been supplied. It will only have to be shorn. Then we can kill it in peace and quiet. And thus they walked quietly together, father and son, who has the honor to play the sheep in the community theater performance I'm presenting here. Work for the king is only a gratuity. How am I to know? You, however, King Oedipus, will still be hearing about him. Having heard about him more than we wanted to hear, I'm afraid you, king. Now I'm asking you, since we're on the topic, how come your super ego became that huge? When, this, when did this happen? Uh, for a long time, we didn't even notice, but now it can no longer be overlooked. Ah, aha, uh -huh, I see. That isn't it. That is you. You always come yourself. You don't let yourself be represented. Who are we anyway? Who do we think we are to talk the way we do? That's over. We're dying of our own flop, and now we are despised for what we have recently been praised for, becoming almost immortal. Yes, the thinkers. Yes, but also the poets, the writers. Pretty important, the writers. And this says one who will soon die, who no longer can foster any illusions. Just let me have this country. Let me leave this country. That's it. You won't even notice that I'm gone but don't take my word for it. You're not afraid, Mr. King. 
of anything or anyone. If you take the word by the hand and out of the house, you're not the minority speaker. You are Mr. Speaker. Forget all the others. You take the word, you take the word out like a dog. It keeps pulling at you. It wants to get going. The word wants to get away. Everything wants to get away, but no one yet knows where to and in any way away from you, even though you control the ratings. So we don't have anything to say. That's our punishment and our joy. Nobody listened. A whole long time, no one. And that stupid word is pulling me again. It almost tears my arms out and stock it. The answer is hypocrite. The king is to blame for the 43 cities' demise just because he has come and now he's here because he is who he is. The king is guilty. Now we know it. He committed the egregious transgestion of letting himself be voted king by us. So now he's responsible. He's overloaded with guilt. He's much indebted to us. He's so loaded that no more debts are left. Now we would need a real miracle. Here they come already, millions of delicious victims strolling in, knife and fork placed in their backs. How is one to decide? They all look okay. We're already searching for recipes of sauces. Are they all coming then? Are you victims all coming so that the unity of the seriously injured community can be established again? Must we offer a sacrifice to the king because God doesn't want to have him? Please come back. Do your word. Or do I first have to call an angel? Here he is. I didn't even have to call. He was here the whole time. So there, the angel of the Lord and master is calling somebody, cursing the provider because he hasn't yet put up a tower or whatever he wanted to provide us with. First of all, for a minimum rate, so that we too can talk to anyone and listen to no one, it wouldn't be worth it anyway. Who'd want to talk to God? The distance is too far, the drift is coming to get us. But we have gotten much further. The angel dialed this number so that the word can spread. He looks at the display to check whether he's dialed the right number since no one's picking up the phone. Skyping won't work in this case. What's there to see anyway? Please, um, um, take your place at the sacrificial rock. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm just getting the knife. Abraham! Abraham! Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, for my sake. Please, don't be angry with me. And better not listen to me. Okay, oh my God. Super. Is that mine? Ah, thank you.
I think this is working, so. Oh, this yeah. Is well, um, um, maybe a little bit of light uh, to the audience, uh, too, if possible. But again, um, wow, that's a, it's a strong, uh, a strong onslaught of, of, of words, so carefully crafted and so also beautifully de and delivered. Um, tough to say so well about the, how does it all uh, uh, sound to you, of someone who's <laughs> born in Austria, knows Jelinek, works in the theater, lives in New York. Does it bridge those worlds, or this piece? Um, I, I think what's so amazing with her works is that um, I feel the plays are like novels, and the novels are like plays, in a way. It's just, I really, I can really see her musical background in what she does. I feel the, it's very lyrical, how she writes. I feel, I was talking to that earlier, to my mother who's here to visit, which is cool. Um, Hi. Um, yay. Um, that I feel like she's really, she follows her thoughts all the way through, like even beyond. I feel like a lot of writers, you know, there's a thought and then this thought is done and then we move on to the next thought. And I feel like it's almost like a stream of consciousness where she just, she keeps going, she keeps going and keeps going. And she follows it, it's, it almost goes past the initial thought. Um, and it just brings her to the next thought, but it, it's, it all flows. And it's very music, to me it's very musical. Yeah, I mean, they, these words are so, so, so forceful, you know, they do kind of, they do hurt, they do have power and uh, also mm -hmm. represent the powerless, but it's, they are so very, very, um, very strong. How, how is it for you to, um, deliver that, such lines, that text, and... Well, uh, um, first of all, it's very, actually, difficult to... Because um, English is really not my native language, and um, I... And she's so verbal. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult to navigate through the labyrinths that she creates, um, particularly because they're not just for show. They really do have meaning, and you have to literally musically follow them up, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So it's very, very um, difficult, and, and it's almost, um, you know, I, for every mistake I did, I'm going to hide behind the fact that, you know, but it, it would probably take months to actually, you know, pile it out and, and see what's going on with, with everything. But she did uh, do a wonderful interview with Gita Honegger um, about, I think, in, in, initiated by the, by the play, but they talked about all those sorts of things. And she said one of the, the things that she said that I thought were fascinating is that she believes that no one can be an actor unless they're musical. Mm -hmm. Because the only way for you to read a play is if you can actually read it musically, which is the fact that you're really reading the rhythm of the writer, so you're really reading music. And so I would also be very curious to read it in German, and I'm sure there's so much more there. Um, and when I first read it, um, and it's actually much different now because we did it a year ago exactly, and now it, it's um, uh, completely, you have a completely different view of the text and of the situation in which we are. Um, so, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's been an honor. <laughs> it, it is almost so that she saw that Miss Piggy figure as a prophecy, as a type mm -hmm. female Theresias who you know, sees what's out there, but for real, mm -hmm. but also the future. You do look like a young Elfriede Yelena. I try. Uh, I put uh, everything this, uh, up. Uh, truly and, like, uh, stunning. The and the, about the musicality, <laughs> uh, she was a, she is a, was as a young age, also a music prodigy. I don't know if you ever saw the film with Isabelle Huppert, um, the piano teacher, mm -hmm. um, but it's very much also based brutally, honestly, on her life. and. Um, and, but I think she uh, also understands very clearly the onslaught that is, uh, in a way, happening in a political sense mm -hmm. to the country, uh, to the people, to the minds, uh, to our uh, morals, to our standards. I think it is a strong response um, 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 to it. So um, she is a very political writer. Maybe tell a bit mm -hmm. about what does she mean in, in Austria or in the German or European countries? What is, where does she stand? You mean right now? Yeah. Um, oh, in general, yeah. So. <laughs> it's really bad, I can tell you that. Um, I mean, I feel like in Europe, everywhere right now, it's really, and here, obviously, too, um, it's just like going like this right now. It's just, it, we're going down <laughs> really bad. Um, we just had a, a, 
like publicly outspoken neo-Nazi elected, um, and he's in a coalition with the the prime minister, and stuff like that. Austria. Is, in Austria, in, in Austria, yeah. Um, you know, uh, with in regards to her, you know, this was before that happened, um, but I, I do feel like we all saw it coming. Um, I, I feel like, you know, she's, she's always, she's very known for calling Austria out on its past, uh, which is why I love her, personally. Like, I always go around, I'm like, no, it's not just Mozart, it's, you know, there's all this, like, our entire constitution is based on a lie, and, like, I'm, like, I'm really, like, heart core about the past of my country. I'm just, I'm also very much in the Jewish community, so I'm like, you know, it's important to me. And I, I feel like she, also the references she has in, in this play, um, constantly with the, you know, the, the Deutsche, Bank, Deutsche Bank and and the, you know, even she says like Sieg Heil and all that. Um, she has, she, she constantly wants to show how bad things are here now and and I, f I feel is what I hear. Um, and, you know, really showing up, like we, showing us that this has happened before. Like, why don't we see? Why don't we see this is a repetition of things? And this is, you know, obviously Austrian and, and German past is, it's right, it's so clear that uh, she keeps using that as the main example. Also, that's what she knows because she's from there. And we all, I think everybody who's from there carries that with them. Um, to one extent or another, um, yeah. And I, I just, you know, and like, like Thomas Bernhardt um, was the other main Austrian uh, theater maker who constantly was referring to Austria's past. Um, huge critic of Austria, and she's the. I feel she's the female voice in that. Yeah, I think if 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 her words and her writing would be a seismograph. It's mm -hmm. shaking, you know, the entire apparatus. And she really detects it, and artists are actually anticipating often the future. They're the one that sees what is going on, but also anticipating something, and they have that uh, gift. And I think her, uh, her visions, in a way, she's, oh, you know, they are, they are, they are scary. They are uh, uh, intimidate, you know, less leaves one speechless, even with all her words, but I also do think that, in a way, she truly believes that art or putting it into a form and standing up uh, as, as beings, but also as artists, it is a very strong uh, uh, form of resistance and that it should be done, can be done, and also being asked of audiences. I mean, it would be very, very hard to think this would be on a Broadway, on a commercial <laughs> theater, where you go before and after a dinner. So it's a different <laughs> idea what theater uh, is. It's more uh, like the old Greek idea where you walk work through uh, social, political complications on stage and you understand something and work something through it instead of entertainment or a, a commercial, where she really is not trying to sell you anything, not any feelings and not any, mm. any messages, you know, if at all. It's a, a, a moment of speechlessness which she fills with words. Stefan uh, couldn't uh, be with us. Uh, the, the director, he got uh, terribly sick uh, with uh, some very dangerous, I think, flu or virus. We wish him all the best if he is uh, uh, up there. So thank you for, for creating this together with you. But the, did he give you he something did. to read? I'm like, I'm looking at this say. page and I'm like, I'm going to read another page. Yeah, but okay. uh, with some singing in between. <laughs> with some and, singing uh, in between. And yodeling. Yes, but um, so he says, I would love to thank and congratulate Frank Henschke? I have no idea who that is, yes. <laughs> for a vision and courage and programming for the second time, the reading of the On um, the Rural Road at Siegel Center. Thank you, Gita Honegger, for translating On the Rural Road and for wonderful guidance in understanding Yelenek word, world. And of course, immense gratitude to brilliant actress Masha Dakicha. <laughs> we live now. <laughs> We live now in a society of dangerous euphemisms. The brutalities of Yelenek words on the rural road are minor images of alternative facts existing in a so-called post-truth world. It is the world based on pathological narcissism and brute individualism. On the rural road has given us the king that we have created by believing in the construct of duality being the class, economical, or cultural divides. Within, our year after, within one year after we first did the sage reading, of display, we as a society have been through the seven stages of grief. 
We have collectively gone from hysterical denial to apathetic acceptance. The resistance and the idea of change must prevail. The concept of post-truth, post-Facebook, post-God would have emerged as a disruption of the world we know. Yalinek text offers us an opportunity for the catastic, catastic, okay. catharsis and chance to see beyond chaos as a destructive force. On the World Road is an invitation to re-examine our individual responsibility towards collective. It is a powerful reminder on the consequences when the extreme individualism turns into driving political, so, social, and economical force. On the World Road is taking all the extremes and forces from uh, them to address each other in the absurdest way, reminding us that at the same time on the importance and beauty of our fragile human existence. I have seen this text as an opportunity to send a message of hope and change. Within a demise of an empire, there is a seed for the future growth. I want to see the world changed and built on the ideas, not afraid of art and aesthetics. Well, thank you. It was a, the great German poet Hölderlin who said, if there's danger, that will save, so that it will save us, also is growing at the same, same moment. So maybe this is part of it. But I think after the, this big statement now and the long uh, uh, the monologue, which was so beautifully uh, delivered. Thank you, you so thank much you. for I think that. Let's open uh, up right away and use this, what I sure Elfriede Jelinek would like most, that we really have as citizens a discussion and maybe hear from you if, if you feel like uh, reacting to what the European from the outside think about the Americans or not. So maybe put some bit more light up here. So if you have any um, comments or questions or um, something to say, we since we are recording it and it seems so we would like to ask you to use the microphone, but is there anything um, that, that what you listen to triggered or what you would like to comment um, on? But, uh -huh. Here. Uh, let's give him the microphone, yeah. Um, I'll try to make uh, some sense of this. Um, um, I was noticing there, there were several points that um, Yellenek seems to tie myth and, and lie together. So uh, a lot of the piece, uh, having just heard it, and I'm not that familiar with her work in general, um, so I'm sort of casting here, and I'm not sure how much of this is actually in there, but there were a lot of mythological elements. You know, at the end, you have the story of Abraham, Isaac, that seems to structure, um, you know, at some level, um, you know, the piece, but I, I felt like there was some ambiguity about her relationship to the myth. So is she seeing the myth, do you feel, as a, as a support, an antidote, or is the myth part of the, part of the symptom, you know? Um, maybe she's got a complex relationship to those traditions. Um, I thought maybe you could cast some light on that. <laughs> so if anybody in the audience has an idea about this, please do to say, is that, yeah, is myth part of the problem also, you say, and is, is it, you know, I, see, I think certainly she does use her, her mythical uh, thinking in many of her plays. Also Medea was mentioned, Oedipus, and, uh, and of course the, the biblical story of, uh, you know, God asking a father to kill his son, a uh, complex uh, um, 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 issue. So, um, yes, I do think that she says perhaps we all have to rethink foundational mythical thinking of who we are, perhaps, you know, that idea, the American idea of exceptionalism, that it is the greatest country in the world, that it is the country that's loved most by God, that it is the best country, the shining hill, which perhaps for a while also it was a great hope, and it's really true, but maybe now things have also changed, and countries in Europe and Asia are finding models, you know, that also work well, so things are shifting, and I think, yes, I think she is uh, uh, obviously showing Miss Piggy is a strong mythical image also in, in pop culture with bloody eyes and as a Tiresias, a female Tiresias who is uh, confused who she is and what she wants. So it's, it's a very strong, you know, I think, uh, uh, call to rethink mystical thinking or shows the... Um, the um, insecurities we all have now about what we thought is right or wrong, what's normal, what's not normal. And at the same time, she seems to go back to that. She seems to actually need that in some way to be able to express the situation. 
So, you know, it's, a, it's a, you know, yeah, there's kind of a... Yeah. I, I yeah. think... Um, if I, no, no, go ahead. Um, I think, you know, you, using myth or um, how she's doing it, I think there's a form of alienation that's happening. So she is using it almost as a tool of alienating to show us what's behind the myth. At the same time, myth is also bringing us closer to you know, things we can't really explain, almost like a ritual uh, where, we, where we really connect even more. So I think the, the usage of myth is, has, is like a double side, it's two sides of the coin. You know? I feel it does both the things, and using it as a, as a theatrical to tool is definitely works both ways, and I think, yeah. No, I was exactly going to say the same thing, because I had the impression of her using myths as a way to trivialize things, um, which is not so common to use a myth for, but considering that she, and she also seems to talk about how she has been writing the plays at the immediate moment when they, the, the things have happened, she didn't really necessarily have the time to like think about it and have her emotions settle. So she's really resettling the emotions with using myth as if something, oh, we all know that, but I don't, you know, but which we ne not necessarily, which we don't. I mean, myth is, and all these pictures of, um, we use usually for something um, hidden, but this is like transparent myth and hidden emotions and feelings about what is actually happening right. because we still don't know how to communicate that. I think Brecht, in the time of World War II, kept a Kriegstagebuch, the war diaries, where he every day wrote things down, collaged, put it together. And I would see that work also in a way of her. And of course, saying that the war has existed throughout centuries, millenniums, kings. That's why she uses that. And that we, you know, uh, that paradox uh, expression that we uh, need to know about history because then we learn that we do not learn from history. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we have to remind all of us uh, about it. But still, there's some more comments or thoughts and uh, um, after that uh, the big evening, yeah. F following up on the myth, uh, while I was listening to what you, wonderful performance uh, of, uh, I kept on thinking of who's wearing the emperor's new clothes. Mm. And, and maybe the story of the emperor's new clothes is that we're, we are the ones who are wearing the emperor's new clothes. And we're, uh, as uh, Aldous Huxley said, um, uh, the truth will make you mad. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what she's trying to do in her own way. Thank you. Some other things, yeah. Uh, I got the sense um, in listening to, as you put it, like a flood of words, and I caught myself regularly uh, hanging on to a snippet of meaning and then feeling it dissolve or fade away. Uh, and that continued to happen, and it, that may be a testament to the way in which it was read, calling out the pieces that have like uh, a, a clarity that you can truly see, and then it dissolves. Um, is, do, you, do you sense that that was intentional to perhaps mirror the senselessness of our times, or uh, is there something else at work? Um, the way I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what she wants, because I mean, in, in my opinion, she's just a genius, so I don't know exactly. I'm just trying to kind of instinctively feel what, where she would maybe, one corner of where she goes, and I think that this is literally her inner monologue, and so whenever you are, you know, whenever we feel strongly about a certain situation, you know, we have all these like little, and so I think that th this is how we all feel. We all have these inner monologues within ourselves that don't really allow us to accept the moment in which we live in. So we rather just keep ourselves within these um, senses. I, I don't know, I can't remember which way you exactly put it, but it's, it, I don't think it's concrete in any way. It, it's just a, a mess. <laughs> And, um, and that's what's happening. 
So I think in that sense, it's so precise in this messness that she makes. I don't know if that makes, if that's even the answer, but. Well, maybe we can ask uh, another player here, Jonathan, if we can ask you. You wrote about, uh, your, we will see your play about uh, Saddam Hussein, about uh, uh, another you know, dictator or queen, queen king or leader or something. How, how does, how, listening to this text, I guess it's the first time too, um, what, 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 what is your uh, uh, um, impression? So his play will be on on Saturday, I think, uh, at 8 o'clock also? Yeah. Here, here, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if I might put you on the spot, what, what is your reaction on this? What you just heard? Um, I didn't like the text at all. <laughs> yeah, tell us why. Yeah, say, <laughs> uh, tell us why. Yeah. I thought about this kind of this kind of uh, leftish rant that didn't get to the point of anything. Uh, so I didn't, uh, uh, I, I couldn't connect uh, to what she had to say about this. I went uh, to visit the Trump Tower today. Uh, this is my first time in New York, uh, so I was just walking around and I visited this tower. And it's so amazing. Uh, such a crazy building and such a crazy figure. And uh, Masha was f fabulous and really versatile and, and uh, it was a great pleasure uh, watching you. But as a text, I thought it was kind of... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's this kind of uh, irony, which is kind of conserved for, for uh, I don't know, left-wing liberals kind of, uh, this kind of irony of taking, you know, the bad guys and, uh, and smearing them out. Uh, and in a way, I think it misses something uh, about the, I don't know, this crazy phenomenon called Donald Trump. Just saying, oh, the dictator, the king, the king, the king wants this, the king wants that, and I didn't like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Well, I think she she does a diagnosis. I mean, you know, his this the golden furniture. You know, these kind of royal idea of the royal family of people who by being the son or the nephew or the son-in-law are being appointed. I think she does. A given analysis, you know, in a way, uh, and, but of course it is, uh, as we said, it's a mad rant um, 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 against it and quite, quite precisely, but also refusing actually interpretation, I think, to your question that mm -hmm. she actually doesn't really also know herself or is it going to and that one cannot explain it. Perhaps mythical thinking or stories can't be explained, that's why we need the, the, the mystical, that's how they, how they um, do work, but she, she is a great, great um, wordsmith, so. Yeah, over here. Um, hello. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to like agree with what you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 I think. Um, um, well, I'm I'm coming from Prague, Czech Republic. I'm the guest of Pen Voices Festival as an author. Um, and um, um, I, I think it kind of, um, it is an example, this text. I mean, I haven't un un understood ev everything, but uh, uh, I know uh, Elfrida Jelinek's work pretty well. It was, uh, uh, everything almost was translated into Czech. And, um, and um, uh, I, I would say there are two kinds of uh, plays or, um, literary works in general and like either um, either the author kind of wants the audience to laugh with him or her at the people outside of the theater or um, or the author kind of laughs at the people in the theater or wants the people in the theater to laugh at themselves, mm -hmm. which is, I think, much more powerful and uh, artistically uh, meaningful approach, I would say. And I, I think that, unfortunately, um, this Elfrida Jelinek's text kind of, um, you know, creates this community of us, this self-assuring community that is laughing at the stupidity outside. 
And once the text does not really provoke also self-reflection and does not, um, does not trigger some kind of painful process or, or uh, uh, does not make us uncomfortable with ourselves, uh, then it's uh, not really, um, yeah, th then, it, then it lacks something that I think is very important for art to, uh, yeah, have. So um, I, I don't know if your sort of criticism uh, is about something similar, but I mean, I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to persuade either of you in any way to think differently. I didn't ask to speak. But, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just to her defense, um, first of all, this is not the whole play. Was, there is um, like, I don't know, 30 more pages or so. So like this is just <laughs> one third of the, of, the, of the play. And then, for example, in particular, what you have just said, perhaps I haven't read it in the right tone, uh, but she says exactly what she said, basically. She says, look at us. We all think we are just all of us, and we are not. I mean, this is our biggest problem because we think we're only speaking to our people, whereas there are other people who have other opinions. And so um, to an extent, she, I think, is actually being pretty harsh um, in her own way. And, and I also feel like she, and there are a lot of pages where you didn't do the whole play. Um, also, in the parts that were missing, I feel um, there is a lot of. I don't feel like she, there's a moment where she says, not even in the entire play, where she's like, "Oh, I, you know, I'm really. I tell you how what way to go, or like I know everything and you don't." Like I feel, I, I do feel like, yes, I get the the rant feeling. Like I know what you mean, and that, I think that, that that's also often how. When she writes, I feel it just like I was saying, like goes thought to thought and just keeps going. Um, but she she does cover all the political um, issues right now. She goes through every single issue and covers it. And um, and I don't I, I, yeah I, I really feel also I wanted to um, when you were saying the ironic feeling that you got. I totally know what you mean. And that is I think it it might be sarcasm too a bit. It's a very Austrian thing. It's like <laughs> very deeply ingrained in our culture. And I've had, I've been wanting to do like a Thomas Bernhard play here forever. And I just, I go through his plays and I'm like, I can't translate this correctly. It's not, people are not gonna, it's not gonna read. It's just, it's so deeply Viennese that you can't take it in, which is, I mean, that's not true. It's been done and I've seen great works by him translated and even at BAM last year they did an amazing like opera solo opera version I was just blown away because it worked but it's hard it's first of all hard to get Austrian German it's like very specific as, as any language it doesn't matter but um, it's just a very it, it we have like it's very deeply weird sarcastic dark and it doesn't often make sense and it's kind of part of our culture and it's this constant like eh, you know this is like weird sarcasm that is sometimes annoying, especially I feel in the States, like it could be really annoying because I feel people here are more open about things often in, in general. I feel, I don't, you know, my, my take. So I'm actually quite interested what uh, has been just really uh, re revealed that this is only a fraction of the, of the play, can somebody sort of give us an idea of what the whole play, what is the structure, what we just heard, how is it sort of within the whole um, work? Um, yeah, can you tell us a little more about the play? Well, the structure is pretty much the same. It's just there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. Um, in a way, it could be the beginning and the middle of an entry. There is no traumatic structure, I think it is, in that kind of post-traumatic writing, um, uh, a stream of uh, consciousness. And I actually also would say very much, he does also look at us where we are. I don't really think, uh, with that word, she said, we are the good guys, and the outside, you know, just we laugh at them. 
um, uh, maybe that's also how we read the text. You know, a text also reads us and not mm -hmm. just we him. And so, um, so it is quite a devastating uh, analysis because she does often is a we and us. So I think it it comes across, uh, um, especially I think to an American audience of the arrogant uh, European uh, leftist writers come up. But I think it's much. Uh, uh, um, <coughs> In a way, it goes um, it goes deeper, but still, there is big arguments. You know, do you? She does appeal to the intellect. She's a very smart writer and does it work. Is it the emotion that you have to go through? Like Brecht would say, you know, no, you have to appeal to it. But was he successful as as much? A, and, and then, in a way, as others who said, actually, no, you don't have the distance um, 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 to this text. I do think it's a very valid artistic um, 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 experiment to create a wall of words to uh, show a resistance, to reflect, and also this relentlessness of the Twitters, of the news that uh, uh, crash upon us like wave after wave every day, and she kind of puts it at least in, in it puts it into a form, and I think it's a, it's a strong, strong piece of, a, of, of, of resistance in a way, but also perhaps to giving up that it might be changing, it doesn't have at all the mission to, you know, uh, I think to give an ideology, ask oh, someone, change your life, to change uh, politics. It's a, it's a brutal analysis in a way of, um, of, of a situation, but um, it, it's, um, of course, um, it lends itself to the people who are in the room that we, 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 we see it's just written for us. I think she writes it for everybody. I think she would love to see this in the con most conservative big theater of 2,000 seats in Vienna. It's not written for people like us, actually, I believe. Mm. That's so it's really interesting that you're saying that because I think the setting... 100%, but I think often and often with her text, I feel the trap is to read it as an audience um, and also in terms of production to have it be a play play. Like, it, it, she's actually an experimental, like it's, mm -hmm. this is experimental work. It's, al it's almost goes into, it's, abstract, it's very abstract and it goes into a bit the avant-garde kind of in a way. I feel just, I mean, all her works. Um, it's there is something very abstract about her work, and I think a trap is to to produce it as let's have a regular theater play because I think this this reaction can happen very easily. It, it's just a tweak, you know. It's so hard. It's so hard to. We don't know what. But it's <laughs> also with her. I mean, even though she deals with very um, contemporary situations. When you read in her text, like Facebook, mm -hmm. that, you know, you can stare at that word for five minutes and, you know, be ashamed and, you know, just kind of realize it completely differently from when she says it. Because it's, you don't expect her to use that word because it's so trivial and colloquial <laughs> and, like, you expect her to surprise you with mythical and then she uses mythical for a joke. And so it's and she very has like face the nation. Yeah, and, and yeah. to face book of faces, book, book of mm -hmm. faces, book of and so nation, book of faces. Yeah, um, some more. Come, yeah, um, could you take uh, the mic? Sorry. <coughs> Thank you. I don't mean to like address you pers like directly, but your comment made me think about. Um, like I don't go to much theater, but I have read a lot of Elfrida's work as well, and that's mostly why I came here, but I, I, I appreciate her because of her brutality and relentlessness, and I'm just like, bring it on. Like, I, like, whip me with your text and your words almost, and <laughs> this idea of like, um, plays that laugh at the community outside versus plays that laugh at people inside the theater. Those people in the theater, I would imagine like elected to go there and knew something about it, so, they were asking for maybe to be whipped or in a masochistic way because that punishment gives them pleasure and they wanted it and she's giving it to you. She's whipping you and everyone and herself and everyone's getting whipped and punished. And I guess with this idea, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm interested in what that, you know, that comment that she said because I think it is important one to yeah, you don't want to like laugh at everyone around you and feel good about yourself because of that. But. 
So my staff gives me signs like this all the time. <laughs> I think it means we should stop. Is that true? I'm not 100% sure. Because we are over time. Normally, uh, it's like till 9.30, and we're already out of here. We are all going to go to the archive bar, which is around here on, on 36. Between 5th and Madison, on the in the middle, but on the lower, on the north side, um, um, no, the south side, the south side. So I hope you you can come there, and uh, you will join us. You can in, even ask more. But you really do thank you for coming and uh, uh, participating and uh, showing uh, interest in the work of of Efrida Jelinek, one of the Nobel laureates, and also a great writer for the theater. So thank you for coming, and I hope you will make it to Saturday. Yeah.